Dear fish keeper or dear aquarist, many people ask me questions about our fish food or in general about feeding the fish. And this time I would like to discuss the issue of fish food. Is it needed for a specific fish? Well, I prepared a PowerPoint for you to explain you this, this matter because we do get questions. And as you know, you can see on my T-shirt, I'm a consultant and maybe I'm able to answer your questions due to experience we developed over the years. So the questions that are being posed is why pass their food? Why did we make it or he make it? Why is the food better? Carnivore, plecos or other fish, what to give? But also when to change to another food or other kind of basli for or three or more kinds. And what food for the babies? None of food. Not, is that not too dusty? In a mixed tank, how do we feed all the fish with the same Basler food? Well, I say Basler food because that's how people call our Dr. Basler biofish food. So, and how long can the food stay in the water? So, questions I try to answer in the coming uh, slides. Is there really a need of fish food for certain fish? Do we have a need for a real specific guppy food? A specific discus food? Or a food specific for catfish? Usually our aquariums have several types of fish and therefore shouldn't the Corridora touch the food of our Neon Tetra? Or can't the angelfish eat the food that we give to our ancestors? Or in the marine fish, is the Acanthurus not allowed to eat the food we give to our clownfish? Well, this is an issue which people it's, uh, it's coming up to me and I pose by questions. And I give you some samples of studies that have been done on fish. And here a study on guppies, wild guppies from Trinidad. And they did study to, they studied the, the details of uh, two rivers and they compared the details of the river, uh, the river Narango and the river uh, Takarigua. And they noticed that the rivers have different kind of uh, biotopes and in the Narango there were many more invertebrates that the guppies had to eat or could eat and hardly any in the Takarigua. And they had many more algae, filamentous algae and diatoms in the Takarigua. So you could see there were two different kind of food availabilities due to the rivers. And this resulted also in, in guppies with different gut systems, also depending on the season, in the dry season or the rain season. And in the dry season, there were different availabilities of food. And what really came up in the result that the guppies living in areas with a lot of green food, they had a very long gut. You can you see here, which was explained, what the guppies were eating a lot of invertebrates in their diet. And the more invertebrates they were eating, the smaller, here is the length of the gut, the smaller the size of the gut is. So you can see here, the guppies in a certain dry river system with the, in the low water season, they had a lot of invertebrates and a shorter intestine, a shorter gut. And here another river system where they had small, uh, uh, kind of a small amount of uh, invertebrates, a lot of diets, and have a very long gut system. So that means that guppies can adapt. Also, another kind of fish study which has been done is been done on the mylosoma, a kind of silver dollar, where the food is depending on the season and the fish adapt to it. We don't can give a specific food, one kind of food to the fish with only like worms or only kind of seeds. And here I explain like the white bar here on the left and here also the white bar. These are just plant material, plant material that the fish eats. And you can see it changes depending on the season, the high water season and the low water season. In the high water season, little plant material and much more plant material in the low water season. The black bar, the black bar represents fruits and seeds, which that mylosoma likes to eat. You can see in, in the 
high water season and the re re receding season, they're eating a lot of fruit and seeds, but hardly anything in the low season. And that means a couple of months they have hardly any seeds available. Uh, and another bar I want to show you here are the insects. In the low water season they have an opportunity to eat a lot of insects, like for instance mosquito larvae, but hardly any in the rising and the high water season. So you can see the mylosoma fish adapts to poor depending on the kind of food which is available. A study here on discus. What do they eat in nature? And the yellow explains the availability of the food or what the fish, discus fish have been eating in the high water season. And you see mostly the discus in nature they eat detritus, waste products, vegetable products, flowers, seeds, leaves, etc. fruits. 50 to 80 percent is the main portion of their diet. Not mosquito larvae, not beef heart. They eat algae, microalgae, less in the high water season. They eat aquatic invertebrates like worms, more in the low water season. And here then the insects, it's like mosquito larvae or, 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 or uh, water fleas, crustacea, from the bottom of vegetation. They eat 11, 12 to 22 percent in the high water season and hardly anything in the low water season. So you can see the changes in the diet and what the discus fish is eating in nature. Another interesting study I want to show you is the composition of the gut of the mosaic pleco, the Teritoplichtis, which is different depending on the food source available. Here we see a wild Teritoplichtis where he had a variety of food to eat. You can see the nice, fine, large amount of microvilli in the microscopic observation of the intestine. Here you see a different kind of microvilli when the fish is living on wood or eating on the wood. When he's eating algae, a complete different uh, intestinal mucosal system and when the fish is starving you can see the microvilli are nearly uh, disappeared or very small. So this tells us that the gut of one species can change in life depending on the source of the food. So what do we do with our Dr. Basley at Biofish Food? Well we collect our products from nature, 100% natural because that's what the fish is looking for and we balance it with a mix of ingredients which is good for their health and growth and it mainly consists of Scandinavian marine wild fish because those proteins are very uh, good amino acids which are essential for good digested krill, algae, cereals, vegetables, vitamins, trace elements and minerals all added together to have a, a composed meal which is suited for most of the fish and we tested it for 25 years to prevent or control fish health here in the past in my fish house in Belgium. And it's suitable for freshwater and also for marine fish due to the composition of the ingredients, which are very good digestible products, leaving very little waste products, which is also important in keeping fish that have very little waste, so less pollution of the water and less impact to the biofilter. Then people ask me, say, Gerald, why you make a granulate food? Why? Well, because the granulate food contains more quality than you can get from a flake food, which has been processed with very excessive heating. And also it's better than most frozen and live food, because that's only one kind of frozen or live food, and it can contain microbes. Even in the freezing process, you can have microbes having a, a possibility of causing a disease on the fish. The advantage of the granulate food is that you can have different sizes of pellets and that's depending on the fish. The smaller the fish, the smaller the pellet, the larger for the bigger mouths of the fish. And it's then also suitable for the different water zones of the aquarium because the smaller sizes float longer and the larger sizes of our granulates sink faster. And we have the opportunity with granulates that we can coat it with probiotica, prebiotica and phytobiotica, which is done 
as a coating after the production of the granulate. I will explain later. An aquaculture which is producing many of our food, our fish, our shrimp, uses only granulate food because they know it's guaranteed free of microbes. So for them, there is nothing better. Here I show you a slide from one of our customers, Loris Aquatics in France, who showed us that he uses a mix of granulates, smaller and larger ones, to feed his fish. And it also shows how our food looks like after it has been freshly coated with phytobiotics and it's done after the cooling of the granulates and it shows that the ingredients are very well maintained here is the moringa and the corolla on the extra extra large green uh, granulates and that means the ingredients of the phytobiotics are well kept and maintained and not cooked and destroyed and granulate food is good for a mix of species and therefore also causing less competition when it's floating around, sinking in the water and distributed. So here the clown loach have less competition with the rainbow fish and can live together. Like here my cardinal tetra living together with crossercalas and platy and another kind of fish and rasboras and they have becoming 12 years old and survived very well only on our Dr. Basvier by fish food. And to show you that the pleco here makes a choice. He has a cucumber available, the, the pleco. But what does he choose? The granulates, because the smell, the taste, and the quality of the ingredients is his choice he can make. Because as you can see, that's what they're all going for. And hardly any is sitting there now on the, on the cucumber. So all our different Dr. Basler buys food contain probiotica pediococcus acidi lactici that makes the gut flora working well so digestion is better and the immune system of the gut is working optimal because the gut has an important role in the immune system of our fish we have regular which is a staple food for all fish we have the one with beta glucans called the forte with immunostimulantia we have the cholera algae with antioxidants are good for live bears and many fish that like a little bit more algae of uh, marine fish we have the green especially for the fish who like more vegetable food more green food like loricaridae or certain cichlids from africa a zebra zoma acanturis and the marine aquaria we have the garlic that many people know that's good for healing against parasites and bacteria aloe vera for regeneration herbal mix for control of internal infections and as you can see those are all not medications you know those are just natural uh, plant uh, phytobiotica and it's not medication it's a help for the fish to control disease and it's not working like an it's not an antibiotic it's not a chemical but it's a natural product which helps the fish which helps the fish to expel parasites or fight off bacteria or per, uh, viruses in the immune system protection and, and, and parasites to make sure that the parasites are expelled. Uh, the assay is for the color and as you know we had a matrine to control very well against white spot disease or velvet disease, odinium, lapacho for hole in the head syndrome, the pumpkin helps for worm infections and the last one we produced was the fuco which is an extract that from marine algae to help control bacterial infections, particularly columnar disease. Kavar, it's very good when you have fish who have a difficulty in eating uh, uh, granulate food or, to, or you want to give as a special treat to your fish. The professional is for the pros. And now we have the shrimp, which is a veggie food with aloe and beta glucans, and the baby nano, which is a real granulate for fry, for baby and nano fish. Well, like I explained, uh, some bacterial infections can be caused by food. And we had many incidents in our industry, like here, this dropsy, or these patches which is caused by frozen or live fish food. So, control that quality. I don't say live and frozen food is bad, but make sure the quality is good, or make sure you disinfect it or kill the microbes. Some answers remaining. I think I re replied most of them in the beginning. That you can feed most of our different food to the different fish. 
what is uh, what food is for the babies well we have a real granulate food which is the baby nano food which is a real granulate it's not a powder dust and that food like the baby it can stay a long time stable in the water for many hours up to 10 hours depending on the temperature and the water flow but the fish can explore the fish tank and remain uh, searching for the food all day long if they want they can do that well, we well about uh, giving an, the exact amount of food to the fish which is always a difficult topic uh, not so easy to give you a real uh, perfect solution because it depends on several factors how much food you have to feed to your fish the weight and the size of the fish the, can determine the behavior of the fish. I mean, the kind of fish it is, in what kind of activity it has, the condition of the fish, if he's new arrival or if he's old, or if he's uh, very mature, so he will have a different condition and different habits of feeding. The composition of your aquarium and the compatibility between your fish, the temperature of the aquarium, the filtration. Well, those are all factors which determine, and normally. Uh, the rule is that you should feed about 1 to 2% of the total weight of the fish each day. But well, how are you going to measure that? It's difficult for us to do that. Your solution is, well, give several spoons, distribute well, uh, and, and then the different fish get a chance to eat it. Maybe different sizes also. And then you check during 3 to 5 minutes. And if necessary, give extra after 10 minutes. It's better to give a little bit less than a little bit too much. And you, you look at your fish, what they need, what they're eating. Uh, the larger fish or the bigger fish get bigger pellets or the bottom fish get bigger pellets. The smaller fish get floating, smaller sizes. So you have different choices. I recommend to feed twice a day, in the morning and the afternoon or early evening. Don't feed late in the evening because the fish have a bi -written and it's better uh, for most of the fish that they don't get food late at night, same as for humans. Don't do that. Except for the fish who like to eat at night. There are some fish who are night eaters, night feeders. It is good that the fish can forage for their food in the following hours. So they always will explore and look for the different kinds of pellets somewhere distributed in the tank. And it's important that during that feeding you take a good look at your fish, their behavior. It's up to you to give a little bit less or a little bit more. Uh, and that is a feeling you have to have and that you experiment. The problem is that most of the aquarists, they have the attitude to, to give too much food. Overfeeding, overeating is a, a risk for the fish. And that causes a lot of losses of the fish, obesitas, obesity. So be careful for that because obesity weakens the immune system, uh, makes the organs become fatty and malfunctioning. So that's all risks. So overfeeding is a big risk. So I always recommend to feed a little bit less than a little bit more. So I hope this little note about how much amount to feed help you to be a good aquarist. Thank you. Well, we have free samples available for the hobbyist and the pet shop. Uh, for the fish health, well, you make the choice as a fish keeper. You can have good fish, you can have good food, and we are responsible, responsible of keeping the fish. More info you can find on our website. Here you can see our website, you can go into the details uh, on our website and explore uh, what kind of different food is available. I have some videos there. And you can see here the different kind of food where you can click on and you can find uh, some more information. And we have a YouTube channel also where you can get the information needed. Of course, we have also books which you can learn more about fish diseases. So I hope this info helps you in becoming and a better aquarist to take better care of your fish. Thank you.